Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With me today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to have you here. How are you this morning, Dr. Paul? Doing well, ready and raring to go. That's here. right. <laughs> want to talk uh, today about uh, a friend, and truly is, because he's uh, been around, and he's actually uh, was known to be a supporter of my presidential campaign. Yeah. But uh, today, um, you know, he's not the most popular guy in, in this country. So, uh, except for a few people who know what he did, we're talking. We're we're we're, we're talking about uh, uh, you know. Ed Snowden, Ed, yeah, yeah. And it's six years ago. Yeah. When the Snowden thing broke, the the the, the whole story that who was releasing this information. So that's good news. Yeah. It, here and we have a whistleblower that really tells us the truth about what our government's doing to us. Yes, uh, they, had, uh, they had authority to spy on some people overseas for national security, started off in, under Reagan uh, by executive order, but then that became abusive, and then they started spying on the American people, which was a blatant violation of the Constitution, and uh, they found out that Snowden was doing it, so he had to escape, uh, uh -huh. you know, escape the land of the free and home <laughs> of the brave. And, uh, of course, we know now that he ended up in, in, uh, in Russia. Yeah. You know, he's almost a man without a country yeah. and a non-citizen. And yet he's, uh, he, I think he's going to go down in history as a heroic person. Uh, has he obeyed every law that we have? No, because the laws were so horrible yeah. and there were loopholes in it. And he points this out. He was a true whistleblower. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the state, especially when it's powerful, the more powerful it is, <laughs> the more hateful they are to people who tell the truth. And this is what this is all about, and it's ongoing, and uh, there's still some fight, fighting this whole issue. Patrick Eddington, you know, from Cato, has just written a recent article yeah. and sort of summarized where we are, and uh, maybe a tidbit here of good news, but there's some. It's pretty sad, you know, that uh, it's almost to me like the more things change, the, the worse they get, and the more they just stay the same, and that's where we are today. The American people... Uh, privacy is not protected. Uh, we're being completely surveyed, surveilled, and, and some of the laws that were passed and the efforts made and the, the work uh, of, uh, uh, of Ed Snowden yeah. didn't really pay off. And some people argue that uh, it's, it's every bit as bad as it was in the past. Yeah, and Eddington, you know, he's been on the show. We, uh, I, I, he was on the Hill for a while, and I worked with him on the Hill. He worked for Rush Holt. Very, very good on civil liberties, and we'll, we'll link to the article. Snowden, the Snowden effect six years on is, is his piece, and it kind of inspired us to take a look at it. Now, it was June 9th, 2013, and I remember the day, I'm sure you do, Dr. <laughs> Paul, too, that uh, the Washington Post came out with a blockbuster story. This mystery person leaking all these things is a CIA, former CIA undercover officer, NSA contractor Ed Snowden. Uh, the Washington Post, this is some interesting aside uh, that these were all his leaks were the source of stories in the Washington Post the Guardian remember they were publishing these revelations over and over and it's kind of interesting that the Washington Post admitted back in 2013 yeah we were publishing all these leaks and everything um, no problem and now we're looking at Assange facing 170 years in prison for doing the exact same thing that they did yeah. so it's interesting that's it and uh He's sort of on a back burner now. There's uh, supporters of uh, this program. Others are very much aware of this, and, and like Assange, too. But the average person doesn't really care. And it must mean they, they don't understand or they don't tear, care about their own privacy and their own, the, the, the surveillance of, by our government. But that issue, to me, is so big. And the more emphasis that we can make on this, uh, the better. But when this was discovered, you know, uh, they they decided they had to do something about this, and so Congress Congress acted. You know, they went and passed the uh, the Freedom Act. Yeah, and uh, the Freedom Act sounded good on the surface, but it had nothing to do with freedom. <laughs> it had to do. You remember how often I would make the point: when you look at a bill, look at the title. Yeah. They're probably going to do the opposite. The opposite. And this had this did the opposite. It just sort of perpetuated this. And now. Even like the DNI and other groups in the government are saying, you know, we have more material. We can't do it. It's not doing any good. 
uh, and yet it goes on and on, and, uh, and and they collect more data than ever before, and yet there's there's no benefit except the stuff. To them, there may be benefit because they're keeping an eye on the empire and uh, they use it all the time and who knows what kind of uh, nasty deeds are carried out because of the surveillance state. Yeah, I know sort of the Hegelian dialectic because the action was, of course, the release of the information from Snowden. The reaction was uh, our outrage, or at least every, every American who cares about his privacy, the outrage. And then the synthesis the, uh, of the whole thing was the USA Freedom Act, which essentially brought us back to the beginning in a way, it codified uh, some of the initial programs that were theretofore illegal. It made them legal. And that's why, as you point out, uh, instead of actually pulling back on surveillance, pulling back on the number of phone calls they intercept in our private, they actually, the NSA is <laughs> complaining because we're getting way more now with the Freedom Act than we were before. And you know, that's one reason why it was pretty suspicious when the Freedom Act was written by the same guy who wrote the Patriot Act? You know yeah, that's would be so a first. You couldn't expect too time. much. Well, when the and every year or every two years when it needs to renew, they always renew it. And uh, of course, we worked hard as many others did uh, with a, a libertarian viewpoint on that uh, the uh, second 702. Yeah, uh, the one that really was the loophole yeah. that uh, allowed them to do this. And but they always renewed it. The Congress always renewed it. But you know, uh, last year what they did was they start. I think it was last year they opened up this board, the Privacy Civil Liberties Oversight Board which is supposed to watch all this. And uh, they did. And uh, as Eddington points out, the good news is, is they, did an, they did an investigation. <laughs> the bad news is they won't let us see it yeah, exactly. <laughs> because you will never guess the reason why. <laughs> it has to do with, well, that will be dangerous to our national security. <laughs> you know, and the other thing that really is of interest to me here is the concern about the spying in elections, yeah. well, Republican and Democrat, who spies the most? Who are the most wicked? And and they spend not weeks or days, years, years on this every night, and no mention of spying on the American people. The American people's privacy and uh, Fourth Amendment rights don't count. So this this is the mess we're in. We're mis we're all being misled. At the same time, uh, you know, the rejection of the Constitution is there. I think. I would think this is a wonderful time for bipartisanship, yeah. you know, because we do have some on the progressives on the left yeah. who, who would work with this. So instead of the bipartisanship of either ignoring this and playing games in the presidential campaign, why, why couldn't, uh, you know, the people from the progressive side get together with a libertarian constitutionalist mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, you know, expose this. But uh, the, um, the deep state and the surveillance state, they're very, very powerful, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big task. Yeah, and the, you know, the Freedom Act ex exploration, I think, is significant here. And, and Eddington alludes to it. He doesn't come out and say it, but if you extrapolate a little bit from what he says, uh, it's expected to expire. But he says what he's concerned is even if it's allowed to sunset, there are other even more vast programs that we don't know about that will be, remain untouched. So I'm thinking of the surveillance state people, which there are plenty of them in Washington, they may actually want the Freedom Act to expire and say, okay guys, we let it go, knowing all the well that they've got a bunch of stuff in their back pocket that's way more invasive. Yes, and um, there's no one group that uh, has access to all of this. You would think, uh, you know, the DNI, and this would explain maybe why the DNI sounds a little friendly toward this and, and has advised that uh, they stop doing this. And, and you know that anybody who's involved up there isn't all of a sudden going to be a civil libertarian. I, I imagine if you went through all these agencies that are even in the open to find anybody who has credentials as a civil libertarian, probably pretty rare. Maybe low down the ladder you might find somebody, but uh, you're not going to find very many Snowdens in, working in, uh, in the deep state surveillance system. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. And, you know, and, and the thing, what we really need is not, uh, because we don't know with these other programs, and it does make you wonder, you know, initially the idea is that the, uh, as, as with, uh, and, and, and uh, it was brought out in the article from Eddington, Executive Order 12333, which is what Reagan signed, kind of governed the NSA's intelligence collection overseas. And essentially it was originally planned to, to spy on foreigners. It wasn't about Americans, on foreigners. 
But then, of course, it got to be Americans living overseas and then Americans having phone calls overseas because it's one step removed from talking to a foreigner. And I was thinking about this, Dr. Paul. You know, you do a lot of media. We do, I do some media. And, and the interest in our, what we do is worldwide, and we know that. We've been on, on TV and radio plenty of places overseas. If that's a justification to listen in and spy on everything we do, it kind of makes you wonder. But you can see how it could be pyramided, too. So you have a relative overseas and you communicate with them. You're the individual that communicated with them, but then you could be put on the list too, yeah. indirectly. Now, how much of that is done, I don't know, but uh, I, I wouldn't put it past them. You yeah. know, if they think there's, if, it, if there's a reason for national security to do it. That's what uh, I think is so disgusting, uh, is uh, all the, everything they do with the excuse of protecting national security. And uh, when you, we look at it from this, this is always undermining national security. National security to them means protecting, uh, you know, our empire, you, you know, and, and our militarism and, and all activities overseas and the CIA and those activities because that is stuff that you just don't really talk about. And if you do talk about it, you're misleading. And I think your point about how they might be misleading us isn't, isn't too, too far wrong, I don't think. And, you know, what we really need, and I don't even know if it's possible anymore, is maybe a very strong president or a really strong member of Congress, like we have with the Church Committee, someone to do a top-to-bottom overhaul of the entire intelligence community from top to bottom. But, you know, the problem with that, and we got a little bit of insight from Chuck Schumer, who I think has got at least a foot in the deep state. Remember his famous quote, don't you dare cross the CIA. They have six ways from Sunday to get back at you. And that is the case, sadly. So could everyone, could anyone really emerge or a coalition emerge strong enough to force this kind of real overhaul of the secret state? Now, if he said that from authority, he's really threatening them. He's yeah. threatening them. You know, Trump, watch yeah. out. I know people that we can hand, we can take care of you if we need to. I'm sure he would never admit to that. But in, <laughs> I bet you subtly that is what they're saying, you know. And, and I think, you know, it, it's amazing that, uh, all this goes on, and then Trump has an opportunity to change all this, but he doesn't. He, these are the people that have been after him. You know, as long as the deep state and some of this activity is on your side, then you don't want to get rid of them. And that's why sometimes the Democrats, you know, won't uh, go along uh, uh, with getting rid of them because they want this power, yeah. you, you know, whether it's uh, war powers or, or whatever. They're, they don't want to undermine that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, going back to the original Washington Post article that uh, identified Ed Snowden, uh, he was asked if these disclosures will change anything. And this is a good quote. Uh, you know, he said, hey, if you find out all this stuff, is it really going to make any difference? This is back in 2013. Snowden says, I think they already have. Everyone everywhere now understands how bad things have gotten, and they're talking about it. They have the power to decide for themselves whether they're willing to sacrifice their privacy to the surveillance state. And so I think, unfortunately, we're not much better off now in real terms. We are better off that we know it and we understand it. We can't blame someone like Snowden. He did everything he could to let us know what our government was doing in our name. But unfortunately, complacency takes over. People throw up their hands. I don't care. I've got nothing to hide. Go ahead and look into my lives. Uh, really, the fault uh, is something that we all share for not really making more of Snowden's revelations. Maybe now it's time to redouble our efforts and not let them pull the wool over our eyes again. Well, you know, I don't have any plans uh, to call the president uh, and give him some advice. He wouldn't take my call. We, we know that. But if something weird happened, like the president calls me, Ron, what, what do you suggest I do? Well, first thing is, don't sign the uh, continuation of the Freedom Act. It expires in December, and uh, it, it uh, uh, you know, is an opportunity. Just don't sign it, and um, this would be a great progress for liberty, and uh, this, it wouldn't be any more challenging to you than your ability to get every right to life vote in this country. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. This would be wonderful if we could wake people up. And besides, if you're looking for the middle, all politicians have to look to the middle and the independence. And, and the president has done a good job on this with appeal and draw, draw uh, jobs and different things that uh, there's no reason why protection of people's privacy. I think people realize what's going on, but they just have to throw up their hands. How can we do this? Uh, you know, how can we handle this?
It's just so intrusive and so big and so worldwide. But I think we could start by getting rid of the authority out for authority. But Daniel made a good point that, yeah, there's so much stuff that isn't even out in the open. So uh, there is no easy answer for that. The only answer for me long term is to live in a nation where the people have a love of liberty and demand that they be left alone, which means that not only should we shrink the size of the surveillance state and the warmongering state, shrink the size of government across the board, put responsibilities on the individuals, and uh, not believe that we need to know so much about everybody. People got pretty frustrated about all this nonsense going on, on who said what about the campaign and who was the most guilty uh, going on and who, how was the surveillance state and how was the deep state being used. But uh, it, it would be much better if we remove the incentive to have so, so much government involved. They say, well, Ron, what you need to do is you need to have campaign finance reform where uh, everybody has the same amount of money and the government will pass out the money and then outlaw lobbyists and, and, and this sort of thing and, and keep the money out of the campaign. And that, that has nothing to do with, with, this, with the deep state and the control. The people would still do it as long as the government has the authority and they can do it. Believe me, they're going to get around it. They already do it. So the only answer is getting a country getting a generation, getting a people and change, really change history to show, to show that we don't need a big government to tell us how to live. The founders had the right idea. They tried to implement it. It was a pretty good start, but it's not there anymore. And that is not dependency on a monolithic government is going to take care of us from cradle to grave, tell us how to live, tell us how to spend our money, and tell us how we should send our kids around the world doing things that we don't have any right to do, killing a lot of people. And it has to do with a understanding of the danger of big government and a government should shrink the only way it's going to be shrunk is when they don't have any money to spend and if we don't cut out the spending and the politicians don't cut out the spending it's going to be cut out automatically because it doesn't work you just can't print the money forever and think the country is going to thrive and get wealth just by creating money and credit out of thin air so there's big things ahead i think we're getting very close there is a collision there's a collision on this surveillance uh stuff that's going on and certainly uh, with our foreign policy and monetary policy so there are opportunities so Nobody knows exactly when the opportunities will be there and what they will be, but they're always going to be there. It's been that way for a long time. But I see times when uh, I'm encouraged. Uh, we see articles like this trying to point, uh, point out what is actually going on, and people are disgruntled. There are more people now uh, don't trust the government. That's good. Why should you trust the government? They lie to us. And if you tell the truth, you go to prison. I mean, how could anything be more upside down? So that's what we have to change, and it will only change when you change the morality of the people and a determination that their motivation is to live peacefully with other people without the government in our lives as it has been for so long. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.